All right, so this video is one of the last in our series of trying to do more complicated regions in polar and spherical coordinates. Um, let's take a look at this new problem. Uh, we have number 43 shown here. Uh, as in the previous video, I've taken the liberty of plugging in this integral into Mathematica. And I tried to evaluate it, and I just gave up on it. It took too long for it to compute, and I wondered if it just the computer uh, was ever going to finish. So this integral actually in a computer seems to be a pretty bad integral to evaluate. It really took it over about five minutes, so and it never finished. So what we need to do is to try to evaluate this integral when maybe the computer can't tackle it in this particular order or in these particular rectangular coordinates. So that's why the directions here are to switch to doing spherical coordinates. Okay, it was possible for me to create a plot of this region. Okay, and we can do some math to figure out um, why this region is what it is. But I, we can see that on the bottom there is um, this uh, equation z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is another way of saying z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay. Now this we're going to recognize um, as for every values of z, let's just see if we can figure out some level curves of this thing. When z is equal to 1, we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared, which we know is a circle of radius 1. When z is equal to 4, we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared, and this is going to be a circle of radius 4. So when z is equal to z, we know that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared is a circle, <clears throat> a circle of radius, whatever that z value is. And we can <clears throat> um, understand that as a shape, okay, if x, y, z, that no matter what z value you pick, let's say z is equal to 4 here, that we got a circle of whatever that height was. If z was equal to 4, we got a circle of that same radius r is equal to z. The shape that has this as a feature is a cone. So when the computer, uh, when we do this uh, contour plot, z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, that's why we're getting this orange cone here. Okay, so here is the equation of a cone. Okay, we recognize the other formula given in this problem. Uh, z is equal to the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared. And that is the same thing as x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 2, which is a sphere of radius square root of 2. So we also have a sphere, okay, uh, let's see, a sphere of radius square root of 2. Okay, so here's our sphere. And then looking at the other limits of integration, right, we can see that y is given by the top half of a circle of radius 1 and y goes from 0 up to this circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 and then x goes from 0 to 1. So according to the other limits of integration we have to integrate uh, find the mass of the region that's trapped between the cone and the sphere. Here's the cone and the sphere. And these other limits say that we need to be um, only the part of the cone between the sphere and the first octant, it's looking like. 
Okay, so there's our first uh, quadrant, and then now we're looking at the first octant, so to speak. Okay, so that's why we're seeing only part of this cone when we did a region plot. Part of this cone trapped with on the top by a sphere. Okay, so we might want to notice that as we move on to trying to do this in spherical coordinates, that we can see that we had a circle of radius one, right? And that's this outer circle here, okay? And that is where the cone and the cylinder intersect each other. Now that we can make sense of because um, if z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to two, then x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, but z squared plus z squared is 2z squared, which tells us that z squared is 1, which tells us that these, uh, oh, sorry, I just wrote that, that these surfaces intersect each other when z is equal to a positive 1. Okay? So that's why we are seeing in this picture that um, at a z value of one, we can see, see here's my z axis, you can see that when z is equal to one, we kind of get this orange band here where the cone and the sphere intersect each other. Okay. So we can even see from this angle that we're kind of seeing a triangle that's beginning to form. Okay, and we can see that triangle um, we know that this is going to be the angle phi. We can see that z is equal to 1. Okay. And we know that this side of the triangle is going to be z is equal to the square root of 2 because this point is on both the cone and on the sphere, and our sphere is a sphere of radius square root of 2. So now that we've just done a little bit of preliminary work just to kind of understand what region we're integrating over and just kind of doing some, some groundwork just to kind of get our mind wrapped around the problem, I think that we're ready to do spherical coordinates. Okay, the thing to notice is that we're going to need to integrate, okay, from the cone on the bottom Okay, and that cone is z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But you'll remember from spherical coordinates that z is equal to rho cosine of phi. And you'll remember that x is equal to rho cosine um, theta sine phi. So we need to square that. Rho sine theta sine phi, that's what y was equal to in spherical coordinates. And when you do a little bit of algebra out here, you will uh, get to factor out the, the sine squared and the rho squared, so rho squared. You'll get to factor out the sine squared of phi, and you'll be left with cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta Okay. And basically, I'm just trying to figure out about this cylinder. Okay. This cylinder, we can see what its equation in, sp in spherical coordinates is going to be. That cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. The square root of rho squared sine squared of phi is rho sine of phi. Okay. Canceling these things out. Uh, dividing both sides, you'll get 1 is equal to sine of phi rho over rho cosine of phi, otherwise known as 1 is equal to the tangent of phi. So the equation of this cylinder in spherical coordinates is phi is equal to the inverse tangent of 1. That is the equation of that um, cone. Okay, now this tells me that we can, we know the equation of the cone. We know that the sphere's equation 
in spherical coordinates is rho is equal to the square root of 2. And I think now we have all the means by which we have a description of everything that we need. Okay, I think we can see that phi, we now know how far down in the angle phi we need to go. Phi needs to go from 0, which is vertical, down to phi is equal to the inverse tangent of 1. And theta will go from 0 to 2 pi, and rho will go from um, 0 to the square root of 2. So, finishing this problem up then, we can palette writing assistant set up our integrals. Okay. Uh, we had the function that we were integrating is this kind of crazy looking density function. And we know that the density function is going to go by x squared plus y squared is rho squared. And then I need to raise that to the 3 halves power, which will just be rho cubed. Okay. And then we need to multiply that by rho sine of phi, rho squared, rho squared because of the spherical coordinates fudge factor times the rho squared sine of phi. So there is our function, density function, written as rho cubed. Okay. But then we bring in the fudge factor, and then we have d rho d phi d, d theta. All right, and we've decided that rho needs to go uh, from the cone on the bottom. Okay. Rho needs to go from zero up to the sphere. Okay. Rho needs to go from zero, so the, this, if you can imagine, sphere is expanding out. Those spheres would go from zero radius up to the sphere itself, which is square root of two. And then we're going to build in the fact that the cone is constraining things. We need to exclude the region outside of the cone, and the way we do that is to make sure that phi doesn't go beyond the inverse tangent of 1. So that's the arctan of 1. And then theta, okay, now that we had that sketch in the xy plane, we need to make sure that theta stays between 0 and, let's see, pi divided by 2. So hopefully this integral will actually be able to evaluate the integral in rectangular coordinates did not integrate out in a reasonable amount of time. I don't, I don't know. I didn't wait longer than five minutes, but it was taking it a long time. This integral should hopefully evaluate pretty quickly, and it does. Okay. If you want to convert that answer to a decimal, right, that integral should be really easy to evaluate. 0.613434. Okay, so that is the mass of that part of the region and whatever mass units you had. So ends this video of setting up a more complicated um, region in spherical coordinates, and you know we had to be very careful about um, the angle phi in this case.